Hey everyone, and welcome to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, recently I've been playing a magical game called Hollow Knight, a challenging platformer with a unique and beautiful art style. The world feels lush, the characters that inhabit it alive, dangerous, and interesting, and all this wonderful vibe and artistic flair was achieved using Adobe Photoshop and the Unity game engine. And though I will not be showing you how to draw or paint Hollow Knight style characters, I will give you a detailed look in this video at how to animate game characters using Adobe Photoshop like Team Cherry did with their epic insect world. Now to keep things clear and simple, I have animated this squishy bouncing ball. I will then show you step by step how to take your animated character and import him into Unity using sprite sheets. So by the end of the video, you will have the knowledge you need to make frame by frame animations for your own game projects. With that said, let's get started. So I have this new Photoshop file opened up with a simple straight line I drew on the default background layer representing the ground. The first thing I need to do before beginning to animate is open up the Photoshop timeline. To do so, head over to Window and choose Timeline. Once that's done, you must create a new frame animation. You'll now see one empty white frame on the timeline and underneath it a certain amount of seconds. You can basically choose here how many seconds you would like this particular frame to last. Let's now draw something on this first frame. I'll begin by creating a new Photoshop layer and call it frame 1. I'll then draw a simple ball shape. Obviously, to see any movement whatsoever, I need to create at least two frames. So to create a second frame, all I need to do is click on this little paper icon. You'll then see a second frame appear in the timeline. However, you'll notice that the ball we drew on this first frame, called frame 1, is still visible on frame 2. I must make sure to hide this first layer on frame 2. Now if I click on the various frames, you'll see that the ball is visible on frame 1 and not on frame 2. So let me now create a second layer, call it frame 2, and straight away select my first frame in my timeline and hide this second layer on that frame. On the second frame, however, I will draw the ball's next pose. I'll simply get it to squash a little. It's useful, however, to be able to see the previous frame or frames when animating in this style. So simply enable the frame one layer on frame two, lower the opacity on that frame one, and this way you can tweak your animation, but with a better visibility over previous poses. Remember, however, to hide this faded ghost layer once you're done. To view your animation, you can now simply hit the play button. If you want your animation to loop, simply go over here and choose forever. Of course, our animation doesn't look very interesting for now, but by adding more frames, our character will slowly come to life. Also, remember to play around with the timing of each frame. So for example, if you would like some part of the animation to hold a little, simply bump up the time to 0.2 seconds, for example. Once you've finished the sketched out animations, you can of course refine your lines, which will probably be a little messy, and add color. All right, once you're satisfied with your animated creation, it's time to import it into Unity. To do so, as I said at the start of the video, we will need to create a sprite sheet which happens to be very easy. I'll start by selecting my crop tool and crop the file has to leave the least empty space possible. Once that's done, go over to image, image size and take note of the pixel dimensions of your current file. Then count the number of frames your animation has. You can now create a new Photoshop file and give it a pixel width equal to the width of the file you animated in, multiplied with the number of frames your animation has. 
simply type in for height the height of the file you animated in. Now we have a Photoshop file with the right dimensions for a sprite sheet. Our job is to now copy and paste each frame of our animation onto this sprite sheet, making sure to carefully space out each frame equally so our animation doesn't get some strange jittery movement. It would also help, however, to have some sort of grid we could use to have a clear idea where each sprite should be placed. You can find such a tool by heading over to View, Show and Selecting Grid. Chances are high this grid will look a little weird. To tweak this grid, head over to Edit, Preferences and choose Guides, Grid and Slices. You'll be prompted to type a number right here. Type in the width value of the file you animated your character in. This way you can clearly see where you will need to copy and paste each frame. You can also increase subdivisions for more precision. Note that all this may seem a little complex and time consuming, but once you get used to it, this process is smooth and quick to put into practice. Alright, I'll now head over to the file I used to animate, choose the first frame on my timeline, select my frame 1 layer, and finally grab my lasso tool and drag a marquee over my ball. I'll then copy and then paste my selection onto my sprite sheet. Pressing Ctrl T on my keyboard, I can now move this first frame at the start of my sprite sheet. I'll then continue this process for each frame of my animation, using my grid to space each frame correctly. And there we go! Our animation is ready to be imported into Unity. So I'll do a quick PNG export. Inside of Unity, I'll grab my newly made sprite sheet and choose for sprite mode multiple. I'll then use the apply button and open up the sprite editor. As you've probably guessed, I must separate this for now singular sprite into multiple sprites. So I'll click on slice and choose grid by cell size for type. For X, I'll type in, as usual, the width dimension of the Photoshop file we used to animate the character in, and for Y, the height dimension of that same file. You can now hit slice and you'll see that Unity has cut up our frames into individual sprites. Awesome. Last but not least, I'll create an empty game object, reset its transform settings and call it character. I'll add to this empty game object a sprite renderer. I'll now bring my animation to life. First of all, I'll head over to window and choose the animation window. Selecting your character empty game object, hit create new animation. You'll be prompted to select a location for that animation, as well as give it a name. Once that's done, move the window over here, shift select all the sprites that make up your sprite sheets and drag and drop them into the animation timeline. You can then replace the animation window so as to see your scene and then hit the play button. You'll be greeted with a less than satisfactory result. The animation will more than likely be very fast. To change this annoying fact, simply tweak the sample's value. The lower this value, the slower the animation and you guessed it, the higher it is, the more speedy your results. If you want some frames to last longer than others, you can of course left click on the frames and move them correspondingly. For example, say I wanted my first frame to hold for quite a while. All I would need to do is select all of my other frames and slide them further down the timeline. You'll now see that my ball will remain in this pose until frame 2 is reached. So in short, the further apart each frame is, the longer they will hold. And with that, I'll wrap up the video. I thank you so much for watching and hope you found the tutorial helpful. Don't hesitate to join the Blackthorn Pro Discord server and show me and the community the animations and art you made using Photoshop and Unity. You can also hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the content and want to see more. Lastly, you can head over to Twitter 
and follow me there for regular character design posts. Alright, with that, stay tuned, have a great day, cheers!